Welcome to our regular meeting for the Town Council of Cape Elizabeth, uh, Monday, November 14th, 2016. Could we have the roll call, please? Chair McCausland? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. And Councilor Sullivan? Here. All here. Will you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have town council reports and correspondence tonight? I do. Yes. Okay, great. I've actually got two reports. The first is regarding the appointments committee, which um, Jamie Garvin and Kathy Ray and I make up the appointments committee for the town council. We're in the midst of our annual appointments process where basically we ask people as citizens to step forward and volunteer on an annual basis for either one or three year terms to a variety of different town committees. We've already had one evening of interviews that went really, really well um, with a great turnout. We have another on this Wednesday. Um, and we've actually decided to extend, because we have so many positions in town, we've extended the deadline to uh, November 30th. Um, and so we encourage anybody who'd like to apply for some town positions to do so, go to our town website. And um, everything you need to, to like read about the positions and as well, the applications can be done online there. Um, the second is just to remind that we will be doing um, Mike McGovern's send-off on celebration on Tuesday, December the 6th. Um, it's at Papuda Club from 5 to 7 p.m. And the public is welcome and invited to come. And so we hope that if you'd like to take place, please, um, take part of thanking and honoring Mike, that um, you please join us. So thank you. Thanks, Ben. Anyone else? Caitlin, yes. Uh, just a reminder that we have an uh, ordinance committee meeting Thursday at 1.15 downstairs. We'll be discussing the signs ordinance that we have been working on, almost basically rewriting. So it might be something that people might want to start looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No? We'll move on. I see that the next item on the agenda is the recognition of the council chair's last regular meeting. And I've, I've heard a rumor that it might be Jessica who will be saying something. That, that rumor is, is true. <laughs> so, tonight, I, ha I have some prepared words. Tonight is the last scheduled regular monthly meeting of the current town council. As we will have a new council when we meet next month, and therefore, it is the last televised meeting for current Council Chair Molly McCausland, who did not seek re-election to the Town Council. Molly has served for three years on the Council, including time serving as Appointments Chair, Liaison to the Conservation Commission, our Delegate to the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee, and as Town Council Chair. She will probably be most remembered for her leadership of the Building Committee for the new Thomas Memorial Library. She led the committee to a successful citizen vote approving the new library, worked closely with the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation in securing funds for furnishings, and shepherded the committee over several years of decisions on the new look, feel, and programs that would result in the beautiful library we are all enjoying today. And it is beautiful. Molly has led a very busy town council this year. In June, we had a successful citizen vote to approve updates to the town recycling center. The council launched a process to update the town's comprehensive plan and reach conclusions on the future of paper streets in the community. The boards and commissions ordinance was updated. Community services became a municipal department and decisions were made that will improve services to our senior citizens. The Donald Richards Pool was refreshed with a new chlorination system and other upgrades. The budget process was efficient, citizen roundtables were held, and the websites for Portland Headlight and Fort Williams Park were relaunched with new looks and features. The new children's garden at Fort Williams Park opened, and an alternative energy committee and a former library reuse committee both met which will soon provide recommendations for the town council to consider. 
Finally, the council began a new process, a comprehensive search process for a new town manager. Molly, on behalf of your fellow counselors and the community, I'd like to present you with this memento of your year and appreciation for all that you have done for Cape Elizabeth and with many thanks for your service to our town. Council Chair 2016 with the Cape Elizabeth seal on it. I'm happy to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was very nice. Thank you. I will just say I appreciate the kind words and um, I have enjoyed the opportunity to serve on the council. It's really been a pleasure to work with each and every one of you and um, in particular with our outgoing town manager. Mike McGovern, um, as well as his staff. Really, it's been a tremendous opportunity. I'd also like to say congratulations to all of our newly elected and newly re-elected um, officials here in Cape Elizabeth. And I see that we have Penny Jordan sitting in the audience tonight. Thank you for coming and thank you for offering to serve again in the upcoming year or the upcoming term. And then I also wanted to just make one other quick shout out to Jonathan Fitz and Wendy Derzowitz, both of whom do an awful lot of work behind the scenes on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth. Jonathan is our cameraman. He's waving to me back in the back of the room. Thank you. And to Wendy, who keeps us all up to date. Um, we don't end up engaging a lot with them, I think, on the council, but I really do want to thank both of them for their hard work. With that said, we will move on to the next item on the agenda, the uh, Finance Committee report. And Michael, are you giving us that update tonight, or is Kathy? Yeah. Uh, uh, th thanks, Molly. Yeah, I'd just like to indicate that prior to this meeting, the Town Council had their annual meeting with Runyon First, and we'll let the auditors for the town. Uh, the audit report for the past year is now online. Uh, the auditors, you know, indicated that the the financial condition of the town is good, uh, that the most of the systems that we have are good, with a few suggestions for improvements. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, it was a good audit, and uh, our finances for this year as well continue uh, to be in good shape. In fact, uh, one thing interesting, this weekend, we actually made budget for the whole year, uh, July to June, for gift shop sales at Portland Headlight. Uh, the, the budget's 505000 this year, and they went over the 505000 mark. Uh, and, you know, if, if the projections hold out, they should be almost $100,000 over budget by next June. So pretty remarkable, uh, considering that they've made in the, the past five, a little over five months, uh, above what was two years ago, or well, three years ago for the whole year. So real good results. That's great. That's great. And I will just add, I thought that was a very impressive audit report that we just received. I was very pleased to hear that. And also particularly impressed with our level of tax collection. And I think what you had said was that we were up almost at 100% as of last week, 99.8%. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. Good. Anything else? Just want to thank the taxpayers for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to all the taxpayers. Okay. Next item up, the citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak to something not on the agenda tonight? No? Great. We will move on to the town manager's monthly report. Michael? Yeah, I have two items. First is I want to thank Deborah Lane uh, for her uh, leadership of the November 8th election. Uh, it's not easy to, to assemble a team, to process over 3,600 absentee votes and then to have another uh, very large group, about 40% 40, 40 more than that, uh, show up on election day in a location that you weren't expecting to be in about two weeks before. But uh, she had excellent leadership of the whole process. 
uh, the uh, had a lot of good folks working with her, and you know I think it's it's probably in many respects the most important thing the town does every year is is to conduct a, a fair open election that everyone has trust and confidence in, and very very pleased with uh, all that Deborah does to ensure that. So, thank you. Secondly, I did, did want to note the passing of a citizen of Cape Elizabeth, uh, uh, Jim Russell. Uh, Jim uh, passed away a little over a week ago. He's 55 years old. He worked for us uh, four different summers. Uh, and uh, he uh, just was, was a great guy. He, he did a lot of service as well through the Rotary Club. Uh, I think he ran every Beach to Beacon road race. Mm -hmm. uh, he ran 10K actually the, uh, the day he, that he died and uh, died suddenly and you know, very sadly, but his uh, wife uh, also had passed away a couple years before after a long bout with cancer and uh, his two daughters, Tori and Annie. Uh, his mother, Nancy, uh, works at the library, uh, has, has for many years and uh, just, just a tough loss. Also note the passing of Andre Benoit. Uh, Andre, uh, Joni Benoit, Samuelson is here tonight with us. And Andre, interestingly enough, uh, he, he was the, the first founder of a Cape Elizabeth Recreation Committee, and the first recreation committee the town had. And that may sound unusual, but you know, back in the 50s, 60s, into the 70s, towns didn't have recreation programs, and Cape Elizabeth had a very, very limited program. And uh, Nancy Benoit was on the school board, and Andre never served on any other town committee, but he was on, he, he was the first chair of this recreation committee, and that was really the forerunner of community services. And, you know, all the different activities and programs, and, uh, you know, when I, when I think of, you know, both of Joni's parents, you know, and I, I look at her successes, and, you know, I, I also look at, you know, it's not only Joni has had an impact, but her brother John in Cape Elizabeth has been, was the longtime advisor for health insurance plans. Uh, which not many people are aware of, uh, working through the main Municipal Employees Health Trust. And her brother, Peter, uh, if you've ever seen those cannons down at uh, Portland Headlight, it was, it was Peter that, that dragged them out of the water uh, <laughs> down at Portland Head. So, you know, the Benoit family has just, uh, you know, done a lot for Cape Elizabeth. And, you know, they had a very fine patriarch in, in Andre. And, uh, you know, I first knew him as a kid when when I was a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout, and I used to go into uh, the Benoit store, and he, he actually, he was, he was uh, you know, part of the family that owned the store, but, but he also was specifically in charge of, it was the second floor with the, with the bear, uh, and B-E-E-R, not B, not, not, not B-E-A-R, not bear. Uh, but anyway, he, uh, you know, he, I can remember him being very helpful, and uh, <coughs> I had to get Cub Scout uniforms way, way back, so it's, uh, it was a, you know, I know great loss for the Benoit family. Uh, sympathies to, to Joni and to, uh, to her mother Nancy and uh, her brothers as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Our condolences to both families, the Russells mm -hmm. and the Benoits. All right, we will move on to the review of the draft minutes of the October 5th, 2016 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Discussion? Any comments or questions on those? No? All in favor? Any opposed? No? Okay, and we will move on to the review of the proposed amended minutes for a September 12th meeting. Uh, and those were amended to include the final speaker at the public hearing who was inadvertently omitted from the approved minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the amended minutes of September 12th? So moved. Thank you, Sarah. Second. Thank you, Patty. Discussion on that? No? All in favor? Any opposed? No? That passes. Great. We will move on to item number 125, 2016, the Beach to Beacon race approval. Michael, would you like to introduce that? Be happy to. Uh, every year, the Beach to Beacon road race comes uh, forward to the town council for approval. It's a wonderful community event. Uh, this is the what year? Twentieth. Wow. The twentieth running, uh, and it's it's gone very well and uh, really welcomed by the citizens. It's wonderful to see so many 
particularly you see so many Cape Elizabeth individuals who finish the road race and, and volunteer for the road race. The, the, the change this year is that the volunteer party and the, the, the lobster bake they have on the night of the race were formerly held on other locations as well as the press conference. They'd like to do those in the park this year on a one-year trial basis. Uh, their Fort Williams committee uh, looked at this, recommended unanimously its approval, and that the fee be adjusted by $2,400 uh, to to uh, look at that additional use. Uh, uh, the town council has allowed uh, for special events alcoholic beverages to be used and it is planned to, to serve them at the party and the chief of police is responsible for overseeing that and, and making sure that uh, you know all the, all the proper precautions are necessary. We've done it for a couple of other groups and uh, with no issue and no problem. So. I uh, forward to you and endorse the recommendation of the Fort Williams Committee. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept that recommendation? Thank you, Jessica. Is there a second? Thank you, Kathy. Any discussion on that? Yes, Jessica. Yeah, I just um, wanted to confirm that the additional uh, use of the park will be over time for public safety personnel be handled the same way it has been? Yeah, the, any group that uses the park uh, pays the town for its out-of-pocket expenses, including Beach to Beacon. They, there's a considerable amount that they pay each year for all the police overtime, and any public works overtime, et cetera. Jamie? Um, I just had a couple of questions. The first one was what, um, I don't know if it's known at this point, and I don't see anybody from the Fort Williams Committee here, but. Um, about what the accommodation for the general public will be during the evening events. Um, I know, for example, last year when there was the Night at the Light celebration, the park was still open to the public even though that was a ticketed event, and I just didn't know if that had been taken into account for this. You know, during the time the park is due to be open, the park will remain open. Uh, these will be in special areas, and, and particularly areas where alcohol is served, they're, they're protected in terms of fencing and otherwise, so that people aren't supposed to be in, in the enclosure or not in it. Um, and then my other question, I know it was noted in the material forwarded from the committee, but um, we've been hearing ongoing feedback from you know neighbors in that area about um, these types of uses, and I didn't know if you wanted to address that any further, Mike, either. You know, uh, in, in this particular instance, you know, the, the proposed events are all in the green. Uh, the green is the area that's closest to Portland Headlight, uh, which is not adjacent to where the complaints have been coming from, which are mainly coming from the surf road areas. It's on the other side. And, you know, and even in these events, uh, they do end fairly early, uh, you know, because they still have a, in the first case, they still have a road race to run. For the, the, the first event, they don't want to get the volunteers too tired. And the second one is uh, after everything's over and, uh, I, I know from, I haven't gone in recent years, but I know from past experience that mosquitoes would drive anyone home. <laughs> Jessica. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I had, you know, read through everything, and um, uh, I mean, it is a bit of an expanded use, but they, the Fort Williams uh, Committee, Fort Williams Park Committee did unanimously approve it. I note that they recommend this on a one-year trial basis, and which I think is, is prudent, but I would also like to add that the, the Beach to Beacon Committee has done such an outstanding job of, in its stewardship and its management and everything with this event that I'm, con I'm very confident going to, to approve this expanded use. Um, I think they've been, done an outstanding job and I, I think that this is worth allowing. Thank you, yes. I, I did want to note the presence here this evening of. The, the, the race chairman, is that your name, title now, Joni? Race founder, <laughs> the, 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 Joan Benoit Samuelson. Uh, Mike Stone is the president of, of the Beach to Beacon Road Race. Uh, David Weatherby is the chairman, the president emeritus. They probably didn't give him that title, but the longtime president. And Andy. The technical director. And Andy's the technical director. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming tonight. Anyone else? Any comments? Any other questions? No? All in favor? Any opposed? No, that passes unanimously.
Thank you. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we will move on to item number 126, 2016, the accessory structures amendments. Michael, would you like to introduce this item? Yes, if the, I'd be happy to. At the last meeting, there was some lingering concern with uh, whether or not, particularly migrant farm workers, uh, had whether or not there was an issue with permission to use, you know, housing on the farms. And uh, reviewed that with Ben. Uh, ben said that all of the existing ones are, are permitted. That there isn't any issue, no problem. I think it was important to to include that in writing on the agenda. Uh, as a public record to make it clear. Uh, it, it, let me repeat, there, there, there has also been some question regarding existing homes for seasonal migrant farm workers. The, and these are permitted according to the codes officer. It's not an exception, it's, mm -hmm. it's permitted. That, that, that's that's uh, his phrasing. And, and beyond that, I think the larger issues of looking at accessory structures as indicated in uh, the accompanying memo on this, the planning board is looking at the issue. They've reached out to the Cape Farm Alliance. Uh, the president of the Cape Farm Alliance has responded that uh, they were going to be meeting on November 16th, uh, mm -hmm. which is still yep. still to come, and they'll be addressing some questions at the time that the planning board was seeking some information on the extent of the use. So, I, and that was in, this was in response to a question that actually came from Council Brennan right. and decided to put it on the agenda as an opportunity to one respond and two to see if anyone had any questions. Right. Does anyone have any questions? No, but I would just say, Mike, I want to thank you. I, when there was some concern in the wake of last meeting um, and it came to my attention, um, I just want to thank you for being really great about quickly answering. We brought, you know, that question and I think to um, the farms in the community, give them that assurance <coughs> that they, in the wake of the, needing to go through the planning board process that they will indeed be able to hire their workers and there was a great concern so I really appreciate that and I appreciate you addressing that openly. This and, and Ben as well. And uh, Ben. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the wording on this, every word was reviewed with Ben so to be sure that right. he, there were his decisions. Great. great. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Sarah? Uh, I was just wondering, isn't there an opportunity for people in the audience to talk before an item and I just was one, I, I know two people here from the Farm Alliance, I just wonder if it, they had any comments. No. Okay. No. Any other comments? Any questions? Just yes, Caitlin. You're saying that each word was reviewed by Ben. So I mean, it's it specifically says existing homes. So if a farm needed to expand or create new, that is not going to be permitted or going no. That they would be permitted. But the, the word existing was specifically because something that is not yet existing mm -hmm. is not yet permitted. Okay. But that, 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 to be honest, that was a word that, as we, the first draft did not have that word. And that gotcha. draft went in the word because, you know, you, you know one of the, the strong rules in, in building inspection code enforcement is you don't act on, on a permit application before you see the application. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Anyone else? Any other comments or questions? Do we want a motion to have received this update? Are we looking for uh, action on this item, Patty? Sure, I'll move that we um, acknowledge that we received um, the memorandum for item number 126-2016. Thank you. Sarah, second on that. Thank you, Sarah. Any other discussion? No? All in favor? Any opposed? Nope. That passes unanimously. And we will move on to item number 127, uh, the discussion of the interim town manager. And um, so I'll introduce this item. Thank you. Um, as we all know, our town manager is retiring on December 31st, and it is proposed to appoint, effective January 1st, 2017, Deborah Lane to serve as our acting town manager, tax collector, and treasurer to serve until a successor is chosen for each position. Deborah Lane will also, during this period while acting as town manager, fulfill any other responsibilities traditionally carried out by the town manager, 
And if this most motion passes, her compensation shall also be increased by $276 per week during her service as acting town manager. Could I have a motion? Thank you, Jessica. I so move. Thank you. Second, Kathy, thank you. Any discussion? No? I, Jamie. I have a question about the indefinite period here. Um, with a, and, and why we're not looking at a, a, a finite end date as part of this motion. So um, I, I am going out on a limb here because, as you know, after tonight, this is my last regular meeting, but we are working with a search firm and anticipating that we will have a new town manager in place if all goes according to their schedule by <laughs> March 1st. On the other hand, if we do not have a uh, replacement town manager hired and ready to start. I think the council will then have the ability to make a determination and um, discuss further with Deborah about her willingness to serve and her ability to serve on an ongoing basis past that point. I suspect that that, that is, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think it's a stretch to ask you to, to handle those responsibilities after that date. Having said that, if the council wants to put an end date on it, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, um, my own sense is that if we do not have a town manager lined up and ready to step in by March 1st, we ought to be looking at hiring an interim town manager just as South Portland has done, for example. But I'm happy to well, have Well, I, I guess my concern is that the, the way this is worded, it says until a successor is chosen. It doesn't say until a permanent interim. <laughs> Forgive the uh, language there, but it, it, I, I think I think we should e either amend the language here to reflect what you just said, or put in an end date. Um, you know, we've just seen in South Portland they've had you know an, an offer made and candidate accepted and then wound up you know not going through with mm -hmm. it so I think even though we do have the schedule from our consultants that we're working with there's any number of things that can happen um, the other thing is that just as a matter of, of again language nuance here it says until a successor is chosen not until a successor Correct. begins working yes so I think that's something we should also look at because there could be a significant gap between the time that we choose somebody and the time that they actually wind up starting the work so um, for both of those reasons, I think we should address um, the language in this motion. And I, for one, am favoring um, putting in a specific end date. Um, so but. if I could just respond to that very quickly, Jamie, I'll just say my only concern with that is that if it turns out, for example, that you hire someone and they can start on March 10th, are you, are you tying your own hands without having to come back to amend this in February um, so that you're requiring yourself to hire an interim manager for those 10 days in March. I, I'm throwing the question out. I don't have an answer for you. And as I said, I won't be here to deal yeah. with that. But I, my, my gut sense is that I would shy away from that just because I think you are tying your hands without having to come back and amend that. Caitlin. Well, I would but, just suggest maybe you put a further end date June 1st or the hire of the successor. So if we don't have somebody by June 1st, then we need to be going to the interim idea. Mm -hmm. And we'll know that before June 1st. June 1st gives you more time. I don't even know if Deborah wants to say yes yeah. to June 1st. <laughs> but that at least pushes that problem out. And you put in the language that a successor will you know, supersede the end date. So as soon as somebody's hired and shows up for work, mm -hmm. Deborah doesn't have to do the job anymore. Okay. I think two things on this. Number one is that based on the schedule we have, we will know if we don't have an identified and selected candidate by, you know, theoretically by late January. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have a good indication of whether or not we have somebody, which is the first problem. If we don't have somebody, then, you know, we're looking at an entirely different course of action here. To address your specific question around, well, what if it's March 10th that the person can start and we've 
arbitrarily made March 1st as the end date. I mean, I think we can always revisit to, I mean, just like we're going to in a minute, extend committees, mm -hmm. certainly extend to fill that gap if need be. But I think we're going to know earlier in the calendar whether or not we're sort of having to go to plan B to begin with. So uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to not pursuing what Caitlin just said, because I, I, Deb, I, again, I don't want to speak for you and feel free to chime <laughs> in with your own opinions here, but I, I don't think that you're looking to be potentially accountable until such a far out end date. Right. Um, so, you know, we're trying to walk a, 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 you know, a fine line here between giving ourselves enough cushion but not having it be open-ended. I just, I, I would just like to not see it be open-ended. Right. I will entertain an amendment if you'd like to make one to that motion. I move that we amend the um, motion that's on the table, which let me pull it back up here, um, that instead of the language to read until a successor is chosen for each position, um, that we change that to uh, Deborah serving in that position, in those positions from January 1st, 2017, to March 1st, 2017. Yes. Yeah, just not to interfere, but I would suggest that you have it until the regular, the date of the regular March meeting of, of the town council. Great idea. Fair that enough. way it wouldn't, it wouldn't force you to have a, a special meeting. Fair enough. That and it's right here in the draft right meeting schedule. March, uh, 13th. 13th, yeah. Okay. So. Is that acceptable? Uh, yes, it is. Thank you. Right. So we have an amendment on the table to change the language, take out the language that says until a successor is chosen and replace that to uh, until March, March 13th, 13th, the date yeah. of the regular meeting. Yes. And I'd also suggest that you add to that uh, unless a successor. new person is uh, chosen and ready to begin work. Correct. Yes, so March 13th or um, upon. Or earlier if. Yeah, or, or earlier upon um, a new manager starting work, commencing work or whatever. I, I think it has to be up to the point where the, the new manager <coughs> actually starts, not, not as chosen, so. So a, um, I, I want to make sure I get the language right, the tax collector and treasurer to serve until March 13th, 2017 a or earlier. I, you could say a date no later than March 13th, 2017 and terminating upon the, end, uh, upon the new manager starting work. Do we have a second? Yep. Thank you. Jessica, did you have a question? Yeah, I, 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 I find the concept. I was just trying to wordsmith your last mm -hmm. thing in my head, which I thought was well. Yeah, the, yeah, the, you know, the, the, the operative is, is a new person taking the oath of the position. That's the. That's the. That's when the person takes office. Okay. When they when they swear the oath that's required. So could we. We add that. <laughs> I didn't mean to make this so complicated. <laughs> I mean, we're very fortunate we haven't had to even think about this for 30 years. So, I mean, it's, it's not as if we've been down this road before. 31 and a half. 31 and a half, sorry. <laughs> not that I'm counting. So could we change the end of that sentence? To so does that mean we are amending an amendment? I think we no, learned at the last meeting, I think. We didn't want to do that. Yeah. What, Caitlin? I think it's just words just to the thing. So, um, Read Can it you back. read back to us what we have for an amendment? Read, read us what we should be saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. To serve a date no later than March 13th, 2017, or earlier upon a new person taking the oath of office. Sounds good. Yes. Could we say new manager? New manager. Yes. Taking his oath, his Town oath manager. of office. Town manager. Taking his or her. The, his or her. The, just the. the. Okay. Avoid the gender. <laughs> yes, Kathy. Um, you know, I I don't see any reason to complicate it. Um, I'm I'm okay except for the new manager taking the oath of office. Uh, I don't see why we need to deal with it twice. So I'm okay with how we had it before. The original motion. The original motion. So I'll be voting against the amendment. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Other discussion. 
On the amended language, yes. Uh, I just want to ask, so uh, it, just so I'm, I'm not clear on your position, Kathy. So if, if because that doesn't account for an interim, okay. us hiring a long-term interim manager, um, is, is what you're suggesting for Deb to be in the position until the permanent manager is hired? Yeah. Just to, or, or the interim. Having written the original wording, the intent was not to tie the hands of the council until a successor is chosen for each position. That's not saying you couldn't have another interim. It's not saying you have to wait till the manager. It was specifically left vague, knowing that, you, you, you know, at some point, Deb, Deborah might say enough is enough and I can't do both jobs. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, but regardless, I think the council has an amendment. You know, right. I don't. Yeah, it's fine. Great. Right. Yes, Jessica. Can we please revisit where we are with this. Yes, Deborah, could you read back the amendment to us? All right. It is to serve a date no later than March thirteenth, two thousand seventeen, or a date earlier. Oh wait a minute! I got lost. <laughs> or an earlier or earlier upon a new manager taking the oath of office. So a date no later than March 13th, 2017, or earlier upon a new manager taking the oath of office. So Michael, given the comment that you just made about making sure that we were not tying the hands of the council, you know, I, I think spring, are you comfortable with this language? I think the council has worded it the way the majority would probably like it worded, which is fine. Yes, Kate. So even if we hire an interim manager, they still have to take the manager's oath of office, correct? That's right. So we're good. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendment? No? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. That path, yes. You, know, you particularly need a treasurer and a tax collector. Right. You know, the manager is, yeah. Right. All of the above. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we just voted on was the original motion as amended. I just want to make that clear so we're not coming back to, um, to another motion. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to item number 128, the Alternative Energy Committee and the Spurwink School Reuse Study Committee. And I was going to ask individuals, but maybe I'll just ask Michael if you could introduce this as a whole. Just in both cases, we've gotten indications that we expect final reports prior to those two dates. Great. So could I have a motion to extend the term of the Alternative Energy Committee to January 31st, 2017, and the term of the Spurwing School Study Committee to December 31st, 2016? Aye. Thank so you, moved. Jessica. Do I have a second? Thank you, Jamie. Any discussion about that? No? No? Great. I'd just like to say good work on the part of both the counselors involved with these committees and with the committees themselves. I'm really pleased that they're taking the extra time. I think we'll end up with something um, really important coming back. Any other comments or discussion? No? All in favor? Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, at this point, we have an opportunity for citizens, <coughs> excuse me, to raise any topic not on the agenda that pertains to Cape Elizabeth local government. We have a couple of folks in the audience tonight. Anybody who wants to speak? No? Okay. Um, I will be looking in just a minute for a motion to adjourn. I do want to mention before we do that that the council will be meeting right after this to caucus for the 2017 council and to review potential council assignments and look at a draft meeting schedule. Just a reminder for anyone in the audience who wants to attend that and a reminder to all the council members who, except for me who will be going to that caucus. Having said that, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. A second. Thank you, Jessica. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.